Welcome back to Coloring Through the Bible. My name is Kegan Harkins, and today's video is called Don't Add Stuffing to the Gospel. So about a month ago, I was volunteering at this really cool dinosaur and fossil museum that presents life and the fossil rec record in a biblical creation context. And I was fortunate enough to be there on the day that the artist was there making a new exhibit. So to make room for this new exhibit, she had to move some stuff around. And one of the things that she had to find a new home for was this glass cube that inside of it, it had um, a small scale diorama of, of an ocean scene with like a mosasaur and some other, you know, cool extinct reptiles. So she decides to put this glass cube in the corner of this really cool ocean exhibit. This it's a, it's a room where there are bones of, you know, extinct marine reptiles and large huge tortoises. They're just kind of suspended from the ceiling and there's giant kelp that floats up and and there's sand on the ground and seashells and there's paintings of, of different fish and there's coral and it's this really cool room. It makes you feel like you are just, you know, well, looking for the Little Mermaid, just like you're walking right through the ocean. And then she just puts this, this glass cube in the corner. Well, pretty soon, you know, it's just sitting there and it's, it's like glaringly different from everything else in the room. And you're thinking, hmm, not quite sure that's the best spot. But then she comes back with this armful of stuffing like quilting batting and some fabric, a can of spray paint, and a bucket of sand. And before long, that glass cube didn't even exist. Instead, the, the sea floor just kind of like gave birth to this big cave. You know, it just kind of rose up from the rest of the sand that was already there. And it was this cave that you looked into this glass lit little cube with this little diorama inside of it. And it looked like it had always been there and it was at the perfect level for little kids to be able to see in. And it, it was amazing and it just melted into the landscape of the room. But I wonder how often we do that with the gospel. See, the gospel by design stands out from everything else that's going on in the world. It shows love in the context of grace. It shows forgiveness in the context of mercy. It takes the things of the world and it puts them in a different light, just like that little glass box in the corner. If we leave it pure and simple, it stands out. It draws your attention because it's different. It's glaringly different than what the world has. And you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it, but you're going to notice it. And the problem comes when we add stuffing to the gospel message to make it blend into society. We start rounding off the corners of God's word so it isn't so sharp. You know, we don't want anyone to get accidentally, you know, cut themselves on the truth. We don't want to offend the passerby with the, the straight edges of our faith. So we cover them over. We round them off. We blend them into the landscape so our Christianity isn't so obvious. Thomas Jefferson once took the Bible and literally with an exacto knife cut out every supernatural thing in the Bible, every miracle, every unexplainable event, every movement of the Lord that couldn't be explained by some natural occurrence. He literally cut it out. He rounded off the gospel and he covered it over until it was nothing like the way that God intended it to be. You know, just like that, that glass box in the museum, we can hide the truth of God's word underneath a whole bunch of fluff, but that doesn't change the truth. Cause underneath all that stuffing and paint and sand, that original glass cube was still there. And no matter what we add to the gospel or or what we take away from the gospel, we don't actually change the truth. You know, maybe we make it more palatable for, for somebody who doesn't really want to be confronted with their sin. You know, maybe we make it less glaringly different than anything else. Maybe we include some of the current thinkings, but that doesn't change the truth. 
We can add to it and we can take from it, but, but all we're doing is deceiving ourselves and we're lying to the world around us. Man has to be obedient to God's word, not the other way around. So just because we change the way we present the gospel, it doesn't mean that that makes it the truth. So how about we stop confusing things? How about we stop stuffing the gospel so it doesn't offend anybody? God's word doesn't need our help. It's truth. It's eternal. It doesn't blend into society's standards and practice because it isn't supposed to. You know, think of a kiss. Keep it simply simple. It doesn't need your help. It is the truth. It is pure by design. It is insanely uncomplicated because we are not a bright people. You know, God didn't want to overcomplicate it. He wanted everyone to be able to come to the cross and walk away free. And if we overcomplicate things, how many people are going to come and just walk away? And if we add things to it or we take away things from it, how many people are going to come needing to be healed but not knowing that the cross brings healing? If we take away the, the movement of God, then we are a poor wretch. We're left with, with no healing, no forgiveness, no release from condemnation, no new start, no Holy Spirit living inside of us, no guidance, no help. And that's not the way God intended it to be. So just because it doesn't make sense doesn't mean it's not the truth. Just because you, you don't think that it, it fits with the rest of the world means that you need to change it. Maybe we need to change our way of thinking. Maybe we need to look at the world from God's viewpoint instead of trying to make God fit into our little box. I hope that you have been encouraged today to just believe. Speak the gospel. Speak the word of God. Share it. You don't have to add to it. You don't have to skip around. You don't have to, oh, well, you know, yes, it said that, but that doesn't really apply. No, God's word doesn't have an expiration date. If he said it, he meant it. If he promised it, he'll do it. We need to believe it. We need to act like it. We need to accept the good and the bad. And we need to realize that the rules that God gives us in the Bible, they're not meant to keep us in this little box so they're not meant to keep us from enjoying our life they're meant to keep us from falling off the cliff they're guardrails not barriers they keep us from destruction so if we start taking things out or putting stuff in we dilute the truth and we don't want to do that because the truth sets us free and it's freedom for everybody so let's keep it simply simple and kiss people with the word of God. I know that's a little bit dorky, but hopefully you get the point. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Until we see each other again, have a truly blessed day.